sa pamumayag pag nga po ng pangalan ni Junto Nakatani dahil sa sunod-sunod ng mga pagkapanalo nito via knockout, ay tila naging isang tinik na rin sa atin itong si Nakatani. Inakala natin na mawawala na sa ating radar ang presensya nitong mga hapon sa pag-akyat ni Nauya Inoue. Kaya lamang ay mayroon pa palang isang hapon na haling tulad talaga sa kakayahan nitong si Nauya the Monster Inoue na sobrang lalakas talaga ng mga suntok na binabato sa kalaban. Kaya naman sa round 1 pa lamang ay nagawa nitong mapada pa ang ating kababayan na kilala sa bansag na si Acero na si Vincent Astrolabio. Ngayon mga idol ay ang tanong ng karamihan ay kaya pa kaya ni Casimero talunin itong ganitong klase na kalaban? Tatapatin ko po kayo mga idol sa sitwasyon at katayuan ngayon ni Casimero ay malabo niya pong matalo ang ganitong klase na buksingero. Dahil sa hindi na ang Casimero na naging 3 Division World Champion itong nakikita nating lumaban sa kanyang mga nagdaan na laban. Ito po'y dahil sa para po bang ang bilis na nitong hingalin sa laban na kahit tatlong round pa lamang ang nakalilipas ay lawit na agad ang dila ng ating kababayan sa pagbabato ng malalakas na suntok sa kanyang kalaban. Stamina lang po kasi talaga ang tanging nagiging pangunahing problema ni Casimero sa bawat laban na kanya po ngayong hinakaraf. Pero kung sa lakas lang naman ang ating pag-uusapan ay masasabi po natin na nandyan pa rin ang lakas ni Angas ng Pinas. Kaya lamang sa boxing po kasi mga idol ay hindi lang ang lakas ang batayan para sa gayon ay manalo sa laban. Ito po'y dahil sa kailangan mo rin ng stamina na kayang tumagal at pumukpok ng malalakas na suntok hanggang sa katapusan ng laban. Si Casimero ay masasabi po natin na isa sa mga pinakamatibay na buksingero dito sa ating bansa na kayang kaya pong tagalan ang mga direkta at mabibigat na suntok ng kalaban. Ngayon mga idol, ay papaano nga ba tatalunin itong si Casimero ang isang junto na katani kung sila ngayon ay maglalaban? Malaki kasi ang pinagkaiba ni Astrolabio kay Casimero. Si Casimero po kasi mga idol ay gumagamit ng footwork para iwasan ang suntok ng kalaban. Eh sigurado nagtataka kayo mga idol dito sa aking sinabing footwork. Pero tama po kayo ng pagkakarinig mga idol. Ito po'y dahil sa kayang gumamit ng paa nitong si Casimero para iwasan ang mga patusok na suntok ng kalaban. At ganitong ganito po ang ginawa ni Casimero nung makaharap nito si Sulani Tete. Na sa tuwing itong si Sulani Tete ay tumutusok ng malalakas na suntok sa katawan ni Casimero ay bahagyang umaatras si Casimero para sa gayon ay hindi nito maramdaman ang infak at diin ng suntok ni Tete. Ngayon eh, si Casimero po kasi mga idol ay hindi nagpapasuntok sa kalaban at marunong din gumalaw-galaw para sa gayon ay hindi siya basta-basta mabasa ng kanyang kalaban. Si Astrolabio po kasi mga idol ay wala man lang head movement na para bang handa itong saluhin ang suntok ni Nakatani. At kung nakita nyo ang nagawang suntok ni Nakatani nung bumagsak si Astrolabio ay inalis po ni Astrolabio ang mata niya sa kanyang kalaban kaya naman hindi po nito nakita ang suntok na ginawa ni Nakatani. Ngayon ay mahaling tulad natin ang estilo nitong si Nakatani sa estilo na nakalaban noon ni Casimero na si Sulani Tete. Pero mga idol ang Casimero po kasi na ito ay ang masasabi po natin na pinakamalakas na Casimero na talagang nahubog ito sa kanyang buong professional boxing career dahil sa napapalibutan ito ng mga batikan at mga mauhusay na trainer at conditioning coach na talagang umalalay dito sa ating kababayan para matalo ang isa sa pinakamahusay na kampiyon sa 118 pounds Vantamweight Division Ngayon mga idol ay kumaabot po muli ni Casimero ang ganitong klase na kaganda na kondisyon ay magagaranti ako po sa inyo mga idol na magagawa po ni Casimero talunin ang isang junto na katani at kahit pa itong sinauya inuwe at para nga po muli niyong makita ang pinakamalakas na bersyon nitong si Casimero ay kaya naman iahain ko po sa inyo ang laban ng Janrel Quadro Alas Casimero at Solani Tete. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF Junior Bantamweight World Champion and tonight the reigning and defending WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, Solani Les Ford.
Okay, for cold break boys, you take one step back. Don't throw any punches around the back of the head. They take yourselves all the time. So touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Well, we know that Tete is a terrific technical boxer and also that he's got power, but he's not been in the ring competitively since October last year. In that time, Casimero has had three knockout victories. His last four wins have all come by stoppage. He is a banger and he is most definitely here thinking and believing that he can defeat this brilliant South African. Well, the obvious <laughs> tactic is to get inside that, that beautiful long jab there of Teddy. Which, which is, is achievable, but the problem is then you have that uppercut but to worry about. When we've seen that, how, how effective that can be in the past. He takes a little half a step back, Teddy, and then whips that uppercut right through the middle. Teddy had one win, which came in 11 seconds, the quickest ever in a world title fight. Well, it's not... Uh, I suspect that might never be broken. <laughs> Casimero, who'll be known to British fans as the man who stopped Charlie Edwards in September three years ago in an IBF flyweight title defence. He won this interim title in February against Ricardo Espinosa and then defended it in August against Cesar Ramirez. Both those came by way of stoppage. Oh, he's a quality operator and if you allow him, if you allow him for, forward momentum and he gets it on his side then he's, then he's a really hard man to deter, he really is. So for Tete, it's just keeping him in his place all the time. Pivoting on that front foot, whipping that jab out, not shortening the gap. That's a tremendous athlete, stands five foot nine and only weighed eight stone four at the weigh-in. Comfortably made the eight six limit. That's that, and that's the crazy part of it. Oh, oh. On occasion, he kind of just does enough. We commentated oh, on sorry, a fight sorry. over in Yekaterinburg last year, it was that fight, last October. Yep. And that was that sort of fight, wasn't it? He won by about a four or five point margin, but he, he never really took any risks at all. No, I, I, you know, he, he can coast the fight, can't he? So he can just, he can stick in second gear, just pick you off and be happy with that. Well, fairly quiet opening round. Bell just coming up as uh, Casimero tries to launch that right hand and just whips it through thin air. Well, as we go into the second round, how did you score that one, Barry? I gave it to Tete. I think just you know, some of those flicking jabs were enough to give him the edge for me. Casemiro didn't really do uh, do enough, if anything, to be fair. Quiet sort of opener, wasn't it? <laughs> Test will come when Casemiro lands one of those big punches, if. Or when he... Oh, or when he fully commits to an attack. He's jumped into a few attacks, but I don't think he's been fully committed. And if he, when he does that, if he can be effective, or if Teddy can read it, and as we said earlier, whip that uppercut in, in the, in the, on the target. Casemiro promoted by the legendary Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Sean Gibbons representing the little master over here. He's the chief executive officer or something of uh, Pacquiao Promotions. Or something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a significant job, you know. He introduced himself to me as that and also as the president, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure which it was. Again, Casemiro got too much experience just to rush in because he knows he'll walk on the shots. But also, with him not doing that, means he's not being remotely effective. And even though Tete's not doing enough, he should be doing a lot more with that, with that right jab, to be fair. Tete just looks huge in comparison to Casemiro. That's an advantage he always has over pretty much every fight that he's faced. He talked about moving up in weights, that might happen at some point. And I guess another option, talked about Inui, but Rigondo, yeah. the Cuban, is fighting Liborio Solis for the regular WBA title. That's coming up in about three weeks. And he's, Tete's talked about fighting Rigondo, or as he's correctly pronounced with the uh, Spanish accent, Rigondao. And uh, two absolute geniuses, but it could also be a stink out of a fight because oh. they might just both be looking at each other. Could be a chess match. Yeah, each it? other to make the first move, yeah. Which this is a little bit at the moment. Yeah, it is. You know, and again, because we're trying to, trying to attack, but. Oh. Short little right hand there. I thought it was half a head as well. Yeah. 
as ever, Tete's entourage came to the ring singing and dancing as the second when he fought over in Yekaterinburg in Russia last uh, October. Well, he, well obviously, oh, that's better there for Casemiro. Doubling up on the jab. Well, I guess he thinks, you know, it's, it's your move to close the gap, not mine. I'm the taller fight with the longer reach. I, I want to keep it long. you gotta make, you got to try and bring it to me. Bags of experience, though, Casemiro. Got a record of five wins and two defeats in world title fights. Tete, five and one. He's won his last 12 since September 2012. Oh, Casimero got him. He's got him with a butt now. He's given it. He's got him with a body shot, was it? No, it was not a chin. Sure. It was. It was a shot right hook to the chin. And he's in trouble. He's, all the place. he's in real trouble. Tete's in a lot of trouble. And the referee wants to look at him. He's allowing it to continue. But can can referee asking, is he okay? Casimero wants to finish it right here, right now, and finish it he has. The title changes hands in sensational fashion. Zolani Tete stopped by John Real Casimero of the Philippines, and the big South African favourite suffers a defeat which was simply not expected, no way. Well, we're sat here just praising Tete up, and all of a sudden Casimero comes in with a short hook. Hits, uh, sort of turns the body, hits, hit, hits Tete sort of flush on the chin, squared up, and I was hit. He crumbled. It, was, I, it I, caught him on the on the blind side from where we're sitting, and you, I mean, you did well to pick that up because it was such a quick, short shot. It was. He, he didn't the attack there, and, you know, and, and we're saying how good Tete is, and he waits and he waits for you to make the mistake, waits for you to engage, but we didn't. You know, we weren't giving Casemiro enough.